All right, I'm going to go ahead and spotlight Jessica. We'll begin with her. Uh, Jessica, feel free. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Edgar. And good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's our morning. It's Juan's evening in Spain. Um, but here in Houston, it is a balmy uh, Thursday morning. So I appreciate you all joining us. Yesterday's announcement was a very exciting moment for the club. Uh, we have a lot of incredible things in the works, but this this particular announcement was something that we've been working on. I've been working on uh, for quite some time. Uh, hope to be at this point sooner, uh, but at the same time felt very important to us to not rush um, a hire like this. So um, we've arrived at a point where we're we're absolutely thrilled to welcome Juan to the team, um, and we can get into it a, a little bit later. But to give to give some background. Uh, the uh, when when the announcement was made uh, about the results and suggestions of the ongoing investigation, we immediately uh, wanted to make sure that the role of the interim head coach was one that we we took very seriously. That was also based on feedback from the players. And um, I had conversations with them right away about um, that 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 sort of the next steps of how does this work because we're six days away from starting the season. Um, and what what transpired was obviously us naming Sarah acting head coach. Um, the plan was, you know, and I believe we referenced it when we named Sarah acting head coach, was to to have a search process for an interim head coach. Um, and Sarah knew that. The team knew that. We were very open with with them about uh, the fact that we'd be looking for somebody with uh, head coaching experience at the professional level within the women's game. So those pieces were uh, sort of our, our parameters. We worked with a search firm uh, to to help us ensure that our search was as thorough as possible. Um, and that that part was was vital for us in making sure that we spoke to a variety of candidates with a variety of backgrounds um, across the world. It was a truly global search. And we landed on Juan Carlos. And it was one of those conversations that I I had um, briefly an introduction Zoom call with him and right away felt like this this could be it. But um, it was also important that we continue to, to discuss that we brought more folks into the fold that Ted Siegel and our leadership team had a conversation with him, uh, that Sarah was involved uh, as well. So uh, I did not want to act on my gut feeling, obviously, but uh, very excited to be at this at this point. Uh, Juan's had a, a busy uh, a busy time catching up with our coaching staff, um, frequent communication with Sarah. Uh, spoke with the players yesterday via Zoom, obviously, until we can we can get him here, but. We're thrilled to welcome him and his family uh, to to the family and obviously to Houston here very soon. And uh, just excited about the experience that he brings, the energy that he brings, uh, and what that will mean for the direction of the Dash, obviously the rest of the season, uh, and, and evaluate at the end of the season sort of the, the next step options. But the fact that he, he chose Houston and chose uh, a career in the NWSL uh, is something that we're we're very happy to see through. Thank you for that. Turn it over to Juan. Juan, go ahead. Um, well, first of all, thank you, thank you, Jessica. Uh, from the from the first moment, it's been it's been fant fantastic to start working with we'll start working with you and with Ted and and with the club. Uh, the reason for me to, to, from the reason for me, sorry, to be joining to be joining Houston, it was quite clear. I think I shared the vision of, of how they. They embrace uh, women's soccer and what they see of the club, not only for now but also for the future. Um, I would like to also thank you all for being here. I'm quite used to working with the media. I know how much effort you guys put to to report on what we do, to to give a good coverage on every aspect, and and you are key for in this case for me and for the club to to get to every fan. So thank you all for for being here, and I really hope that I can get there in person. Uh, for me, as Jessica said, maybe there were some other options. I've been coaching, uh, probably you all know, I've been coaching in, in Spurs for 10 seasons, uh, the last few seasons at the top level. Then I moved to Spain, coach here, but when the opportunity came to to join a league like the NWSL and a club with, with the potential, not only for now, but also you know, for the future, I think uh, it was a no-brainer. I really wanted to be part of it. and. And from now on, I'm gonna give myself to to make sure all the fans in Houston enjoy with our football. That's my target uh, that we can uh, really affect people with our soccer, making sure that whatever happens on the pitch, uh, we will always try to dominate games, uh, play with, you know, dominate possession, be aggressive on counter attacks, and and try to do a, a soccer that that 
whatever happens at the end of the game, the the people that comes to watch or that watch on tele is quickly checking when we are playing again because uh, we want to create that connection with with our city, with our fans, and and with the community. So I'm more than happy. Uh, please feel free to ask any any questions you you might have. I'm sure you will have some some interesting talking points to go through. So. Edgar, if you if you want to to open the floor to them, I'm, I would be more than happy to answer the questions they might have. Absolutely, we'll start with Daniel Lerner from the Houston Chronicle. Daniel, go ahead. Hi Juan, nice to meet you. Um, my question is, you know, you talked about why you thought the dash was a good fit, but any interim position, there's some level of risk involved in, in taking a job like that. Why did you feel like that was something that you wanted to do? Um, in that in that case, that's something that in, in my world, in the world of coaching, it happens very often. It happens all over the world, really. Like these positions, uh, sometimes they that come up in in the middle of the season, uh, with that job title of interim is is to make an impact, and is may is maybe different than to, to when you join at the beginning of the year, uh, of the season. But realistically, I don't look at the job title. I look at the opportunity. I think the opportunity to be with the Dash, and as I said, with with the project they have in hands, with what they want to do for for the players, what they want to do for the staff, for the for the city, it's something I I really identify myself with. So I think uh, I'm not really focused on on the job title. I'm more focused on on the job ahead. That is uh, very exciting, Daniel. And then just looking at the NWSL as a whole, having coached in some of the other top women's leagues in the world, um, I mean. What about the state of the league right now uh, appeals to you? And, and what do you think are going to be maybe challenges or differences um, coaching in this league than in other ones? Well, I think uh, maybe the style of football is, is a bit uh, more similar to what England was in terms of a lot of transitions, uh, a lot of athleticism. Uh, but I can definitely bring in a little bit of our tactical, technical approach to the game that I believe and I have had the chance to work with some players in the team, with some players that are uh, as well in the league or that came from the league to the club where I was and and it's very exciting, it's a challenge at the end of the day, every every team, not only every league, every team that, that you coach is different, different environment, different players uh, and the challenge there is, it is another one that is a, a bit different but I think that I can make an impact and and help the players to to grow and to, to become a little bit better. So, so yeah, I think it's gonna be it's exciting. The NWSL for me is is the top league in the world where you know the most of the world champion players. So at the moment, with all the American players coming back, they are there. Some of the top players uh, want to go there. It's a league that has been a reference for a long time, and and not only the league, also the culture of women's soccer in America. From when I was there, it was it was special. So so I'm really looking forward to get there. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, Daniel. Up next, we'll go with Steph Yang from The Athletic. Go ahead. Thanks, Steph Yang from The Athletic. Thank you for your time, Juan. Um, I just want to ask you to expand a little more on what you just talked about, where you have different experiences in different leagues in England and Spain. You've talked about this before, adapting to the local culture, the local style of play. And you mentioned you like being aggressive in the counter press. So, for example, I think Andrew Biosel is a a league that has a reputation for having highly athletic players, maybe some of the most athletic players in the world. So for example, how would that, you know, um, how would that impact, you know, your analysis of the strengths that you would like to develop here in NWSL as opposed to, you know, adapting in England and Spain? Yeah, well, I think in, in modern soccer, you know, you have to manage every aspect. You, you need to be, you know, it's not anymore like you're going to be able to dominate possession for, 80% of the game and from there win the game. That just doesn't happen if you look across the world now you're in any kind of soccer. So uh, you have to be really good on possession, but you have to be good on the counter press, defending organized on the block uh, and, and and then on the counter attack. So I think it will be a question of obviously analyzing the opposition, but I'm a coach that I really believe that exploiting our strengths uh, is going to be the key. The team has a lot of players that, that can do both, that can be very good in possession, but at the same time, we have a team that, that can be aggressive with the space. And uh, we have, as we've been showing, uh, thanks to the fantastic job that Sarah and the rest of the staff are doing that we are a team hard to hard to beat when we are organized defensive. After the last game, we have the best defensive record. So it will be a question of, of making sure I can help them on on, on each and, and every aspect. And, and from there, uh, try to do our best to get into those playoffs for the first time in the club's history. 
Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Up next, we'll start, or we'll go ahead and go with Theo from the Striker. Go ahead, Theo. Hi, nice to see you again, Juan. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Thank you, Theo. Um, I have a question for Jess as, as, as well as Juan, if that's all right. Um, what stuck out to you uh, about uh, Juan in the, in the search process? Thanks, Theo. Um, it's interesting because I, I truly felt the energy and the passion that he has in not just the, the coaching opportunity in that ecosystem, but truly the holistic view of, of the entire soccer operation. Uh, we talked a lot about the pieces around the team, uh, the staff, the medical staff, uh, performance staff, and those types of questions showed me, you know, that, that while training on the field and performing in matches uh, is obviously a lot of what we speak about with the players, that he truly has a, a view and an appreciation for, for the entire uh, system. So it was, it was the questions that he was asking that were very thoughtful, uh, the energy and the passion and, and a true excitement about Houston and the dash and this opportunity. Uh, there was a, is a familiarity with a couple of players on our, on our team uh, that had played for him and with him at Batiste. So I, I think in that regard, he had heard about the club and what was happening here. And, and uh, that the fact that he was so excited about Houston really, really stuck out with me because obviously I'm biased and think that, um, that this, this city and this club is, uh, is, is going to make massive strides in the league. And, and we will do that. And to do that, we need the absolute best pieces possible uh, around the entire ecosystem of, of the players. And I think we got one. Does that make Juan's appointment a uh, kind of part of your long-term vision, or is, do you see Juan as a long-term part of this club? I do. I think it's a great it's a great question. It was actually so I alluded to earlier to some of the feedback in the initial conversations with the players about the direction with an interim coach that you could could go, which maybe surprised a couple of people yesterday. It, it, the you know the timing of the announcement. We're in the middle of the season. Uh, but I, the important thing was that, uh, and this was a request directly from them, was that it, the the it, an external interim hire be something and someone that uh, we see having a long term future with the club, uh, rather than finding, you know, a short term solution to carry us through the season. Um, obviously, circumstances around where we are as a club, you know, is is part of the reason for that structure right now. Uh, but we did this search, Theo, to answer your question with a with a long term plan in mind. Thank you very much for the clarification, Jess. Um, Juan, how was your first conversation with, with Sarah and what are you looking forward to in regards to your relationship with her? Well, I was, uh, first of all, thank you, Jessica. Uh, it was, I, I'm really pleased that, that the, the passion is something that people can feel from me because uh, that's one of my values. I, I really believe that soccer, it's, you know, everyone that's involved with soccer, it's it's because it was their passion when they were child. I'm not different, so so I'm I'm happy that I'm still, you know, projecting that image. Uh, and regarding Sarah, I was extremely surprised. You know, like someone like her that maybe is going in a role that she wasn't expecting to be in, and uh, that she's been with the club for such a short period of time before that happened. So she probably didn't know all the you know everything within it because it takes some time to do that and to do the role how she was doing it was already something to admire uh, but at the same time her attention to detail uh, her way to you know adapt to to that that jessica was saying you know like coaches maybe people will still see us like you know like the ones that go on the field say we play three for three or two you know four for two diamond or whatever formation you want to play and then go home but it's much more than that and it's not easy because nobody really teaches you that how to manage uh, people how to manage different departments that are completely different to to soccer and she really stepped into that role and and has done fantastically well you know when i was asking her how she was doing different things she was uh, doing the right things or, or keeping how we say the the boat the steady as the, until a new captain come come on board no so for me that really caught my attention and and uh, her football knowledge and how she was approaching things, how she was finding solutions for the problems that were coming up on the pitch. She was brilliant. So for me, um, I, I've been already uh, working a little bit with her on the, you know, on the, as Jessica said, on Zooms. Uh, and the same with the rest of the coaching team. They are fantastic. They are very committed, you know, Hero, uh, Michael, Ma, and, and the medical team. They're, it's, a, it's a very exciting team to work for because uh, you can feel that they are really passionate about it and that they are really 
uh, you know, focused and committed to to do the best they can for for the club and for the players and for the fans. So, so yeah, I'm I'm really excited to to get to know her in in person and maybe stop talking via Zoom. That it's, it's been it's been difficult. Um, last one for me, uh, Juan. How has the reaction been 24 hours in to being unveiled? Um, how are you feeling about kind of what you've seen from people who've reached out to you or, or from Twitter, online, whatever? Yeah, to be fair, uh, I was saying it before, I can't really, I haven't been able to catch up with the impact that this news has had uh, on, on the professional side. People that, you know, like all the coaches from the top leagues, uh, players that have coached, uh, fans uh, from clubs that I've worked for, they've been fantastic because one thing that for me is very important and we spoke uh, with Jessica about it is the legacy you live in in the places is very important. Uh, by that, I mean, every person really goes to somewhere and at some point leaves and it's what you leave behind is what really, what really matters because that is the way you will be remembered. Uh, that's something I learned from my dad, so I think it's very important. Uh, and also, the people from Houston, it's been unbelievable. I, I'm used to uh, the language now. Uh, they've been fantastic. It's been really, really supportive. The fans, uh, I can't wait really to, to get there and start, you know, contacting with them in person and hopefully um, getting to getting to know them, getting getting to have fun with us and even some people in the in the NWSL that I've worked for before. Uh, they've made public, you know, like signs of, of happiness when I'm when they've heard that I'm getting there. So I'm I'm really excited and thrilled by by the welcome, uh, not only in America, which is fantastic, but also here in, in Europe. Thanks so much for your time today, Juan Just cheers. Thank you, Theo. Up next, we'll go with Grant. Grant, go ahead. Grant Wiedenfeld with Keeper Notes. Um, bienvenido a Houston, señor. Uh, es, es, es bueno uh, que, que haya un director uh, hispanohablante. Hay, hay muchos hispanohablantes de lengua materna, no como yo, en Houston. Y también las relaciones con uh, la Liga MX, uh, algunos uh, clubes allá. Uh, que, que, quería saber si, si has hablado con algunos jugadores, uh, quiénes y de qué habla, uh, hablarán. Eh, bueno, muchas gracias. Should I answer in Spanish then? I guess so, ¿no? Eh, sí, eh, pues eh, he hablado eh, con todo el equipo ya. Eh, ya me he introducido a, a todas, me he presentado. Ha sido fantástico el por fin poder entrar en contacto con todas ellas. Creo que la bienvenida por su parte ha sido espectacular. También ellas a, a hablaron y expresaron su felicidad de, de recibirme, que habían escuchado muy buenas cosas sobre mí, lo cual me, me agrada, ¿no? Porque yo cuando entrené, por ejemplo, a las dos jugadoras que entrené, en ningún momento pensaba, pensábamos que ellas iban a acabar en Houston o que ellas iban a acabar juntas o, o que en un momento iba a acabar yo también entrenándolas allí. Eh, y creo que cuando, cuando hemos hablado con el equipo, la bienvenida ha sido espectacular, como Rachel está con la selección, Jane Campbell, que es la capitana, pues también expresó un poco el, el sentir del equipo. Otras compañeras como, como Eddie preguntaron si iba a ser capaz que yo pudiera ir con mi familia. Fue un momento, fue un momento muy bonito y que te hacen el, el sentirte bienvenido en la distancia, creo que hacen las cosas más fáciles, ¿no? Sí, gracias. Y, y Jessica, Jessica uh, dijo que uh, conociste a algunos jugadores antes. Uh, ¿es, uh, ¿Es Miquela o, o otra? No, no, no sé. Sí, eh, Miquela Abam eh, y Natalie Jacobs. Eh, Miquela Abam, when, cuando yo firmé por el Betis, ella estaba aquí, estaba lesionada pero al final de la temporada ya pudo jugar algunos partidos. Eh, yo desde el principio, para mí, parte de, de lo que hago es intentar afectar a todas las jugadoras y el prestarles la mayor atención individualmente para ayudarlas a mejorar. Entonces, con Micaela, aunque estuviese lesionada, pues siempre intentaba pues, participar en sus sesiones o tener una relación con ella positiva para que también se sintiera parte del grupo y al final pues, pues mantuvimos ¿no? esa, esa buena relación que le ayudó a volver al campo y Natalie pues venía también de una experiencia que no estaba muy contenta en Estados Unidos, a través de algunos contactos que tenía yo conseguimos traerla 
aquí al Real Betis, estuvo muy contenta, creo que encontró un nivel muy bueno futbolístico, en Navidad ya estaba un poco apalabrado que iba a volver allí a, a Estados Unidos y al final ha acabado allí en Houston y para mí será un placer y el volver a tenerlas en, en el equipo. ¿no? Y luego una cosa que a lo mejor te quería comentar antes que has mencionado, ¿no? que es la Liga MX eh, mexicana, Creo que también esas relaciones, ¿no? pues sobre todo yo también estuve en Arizona, en California, donde como tú has dicho hay muchos hispanohablantes. Eh, creo que esa relación es muy importante para que, no sé, en el futuro igual una competición eh, donde compitan los equipos de, de la confederación de allí con los equipos eh, mexicanos, creo que sería eh, algo fantástico y que incrementaría incluso más ¿no? la atención tan grande que tiene el fútbol, tanto en México, el fútbol femenino, con México y en y en Estados Unidos, ¿no? Sí, sí. Uh, muchas gracias. Y encantado. Um, and Edgar, if I could ask one question of Jessica. Thank you. Um, thanks. Uh, Jessica, you, you, uh, the, the announcement uh, talked about how uh, Sarah Loudon would continue to be, uh, you know, for, would be the first assess, assistant. So I was just... Um, She sounds like she's also, you know, kind of a long-term part of the of the future for the Dash. Uh, I was wondering if there was if there was um, if she was involved in any kind of licensing um, programs. I know, I mean, one of the great great uh, parts of, of Juan's resume is that he has the you know the highest UEFA Pro licenses. If there was uh, that or or any anything else to um, Sarah's involvement. It's a great question, Grant. Um, I believe in general, we, we have asked her to do what it was almost an impossible task when you look at when she joined the, the club time-wise um, and the, the, you know, the date in which I called and said, we'd like you to serve as our acting head coach. And we realized that's a big ask. And, and what do you, can you think about it and let me know? Uh, since then, you know, uh, she has done a phenomenal job at, you know, um, leading the team, collaborating with the team and the staff, uh, having such a such an empathetic and thoughtful approach. I, I can't say enough great things about her. So for 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 me, the the sort of icing on the cake of this announcement is that we can we can do two things. We can bring in uh, someone with the experience and leadership um, that Juan has and that we can retain Sarah and elevate her from, you know, we did not have previously a first assistant clarified in our structure, but it gave us an opportunity to, to do that. Um, it's a, it, we elected not to use the word promotion because it, uh, obviously she's serving in a, in a larger role right now. Um, but yes, we want to support her. I think it's a great, it's a great point about ensuring that uh, there's investment behind that support uh, in preparing her for, for the next step of her career. Um, I, I, her, um, opinion and thoughts behind the conversation she had with Juan were very important to us uh, because she's with the team every single day and has a has a great understanding of um, what the team needs and has been able to be what the team needs and would would know sort of that next step piece. So yes, we'd love to continue supporting her, um, however that looks, uh, including uh, evaluating what 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 we can do to help help propel her uh, as long as we can and retain her, obviously, um, understand that uh, she's got a very, very bright future ahead of her. Great, thank you. And uh, reading between the lines, it seemed, I, I gather that there's there's no update on the Clarkson investigation, no timeline for it, it's just indefinitely. Correct. Out there. Is that right? Okay. That's correct. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. You, could, oh, you could have asked me in Spanish. I hablo un poco de español, pero yo... Prefiero inglés en esta situación. <laughs> That's all I got. Up next, we'll uh, switch things over to Adam. Adam Wickler, go ahead. Hi there, Juan. Uh, congratulations. We, uh, we're we going to have a lot of time to, to talk Dash once you get here, but I kind of want to ask you about the big story of the day here in Houston. Uh, when you do get here to Houston, we could potentially be a World Cup city. Uh, and everything we've heard about, you know, landing a bid to host a men's World Cup, it, it tells us that it'll kind of elevate our soccer profile, men, women, youth, pro soccer, somebody with vast international experience like you. I wonder what that would mean to someone like you coming to a city that is going to be known for potentially hosting a World Cup. 
Well, I think it will be a dream come true because, funny enough, uh, the, the, the USA in 1994, for me, was the first World Cup that I completely remembered. Uh, and, you know, it was an important moment for, for my life. So being part of a city that's going to host the World Cup in, you know, like some years after, I think it's going to be unbelievable. I think it will be massive for the city, uh, not only for soccer, for everything related to it, obviously becoming a host of of such an event, no, the most important event on, on, on soccer, for me, even more important than, than the Olympics because of what I like, but uh, I think it will be unbelievable. I think it will create even, you know, even more, if, even if it's a, a soccer city, it will create even more love for the game. It will create, uh, it will create jobs. It will create revenue. It will create attention from all over the world. It will put Houston, obviously Houston is a very famous city because obviously all the sports that are played in there. But if so, if if Houston becomes a, a hosting city that I believe is going to be today at my 11 p.m., which is, I think, your 4 p.m. or something. Uh, yeah, am I right? I'm going to try to be plugged in. I'm not sure. I need to speak with Edgar to see where, where I can see those news live, but I'm pretty sure that, that we will do something with our social media. It's a, it's an amazing moment and it's something that if we can get it, and I really hope so that we could, uh, it's going to be a change, uh, not only for soccer, but for the whole community. So I'm really, really hoping that, that, that we can get it. Thank you, Juan. Yeah, welcome, Adam. I'm looking forward to speak about the dash, as you said. Do we have a follow-up here from Daniel? Go ahead. Yeah, Jessica, I just wanted to clarify, you said that you guys used a, a search firm in this process and then Sarah was involved as well. Were there any players who were kind of involved on, on the front end of this or were they just kind of brought in after you had maybe narrowed it down to, to Juan or a few other candidates? Thanks, Danielle. They, they, we had conversations at the beginning of the process about the, the profile of the coach that, um, you know, in their mind was what we needed, which was very helpful to have. And that's where we landed on searching for a, a head somebody with head coach experience um, within the women's leagues, women um, women's game specifically, and at a pro level. Those were sort of our our stepping stones. Uh, and and the uh, sort of anecdote behind that also was a a conversation about uh, beyond the experience, the 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 person, the leadership, communication, values uh, component that um, was is so important to any organization, but absolutely in a leadership role like this. Um, and I and I definitely believe we've we've found that. Well, thank you. Thanks. Anything else before? Oh, one more here from Victor. Victor, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, for um, for Miss O'Neill, just so to clarify, there's zero update on the James Clarkson thing. Nothing you can share as far as, I mean, is the NWSL keeping the club in the dark? Uh, and 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 as far as how long this this uh, process can take. Could it be over the year, uh, over a year? I mean, it, how is the uh, club planning to uh, um, to handle that type of situation if it takes, I mean, what are we talking about, more than two years, three years? I mean, how long can this thing take? Thanks, Victor, for the question. I know that's, that is top of mind. Um, today, the celebration is about Juan joining our club, and I want to want to respect that. Um, I also respect the question. I, I do not have any update on the timeline, uh, but I am very excited about the point that we are at with the with the team right now, uh, and I know that there's unanswered questions as as it, as it relates to the investigation. And if, when we have those answers to share, we we will share them. But thank you for asking. Just additionally, is is the club doing anything internally to go back backwards, maybe even to the hiring process, as far as uh, what what else they can find out internally? Can you clarify when you ask the hiring process, the hiring process for, for right, well, the hiring, the, the hiring no, no, the hiring of, of James Clarkson was done by the previous uh, um, sort of front office. Is there is there an investigation internally from the club to go all the way back to those days? In general, part of the league and PA investigation that began last October with all clubs covered all facets of um, club operations, both at the league level and at the club level. So. Uh, those those evaluations about internal processes, league processes, communications, reporting mechanisms, all of those things have been the scope of the investigation that began uh, in October. And then I one for for Juan. Um, Juan, si me permite, se la pregunto en español para que se pueda eh, comunicar mejor. 
Eh, usted estuvo en Estados Unidos por un, un tiempo, eh, en, algún, en alguno de, de, esa, de esos tiempos que estuvo aquí en Estados Unidos, cruzó alguna vez eh, en su carrera con James Clarkson eh, y ha, eh, ha tenido alguna interacción con el, con el ex coach del Dash? Eh, pues no, la verdad que no he tenido ninguna interacción con él, estuve hace mucho tiempo, fue un tiempo magnífico allí en, en la zona que estuve, ¿no? en, tanto en California como en Arizona, donde entrené, eh, entrené a entrenadores como entrenar, trabajé con algunos eh, clubes élite, la compañía con la que trabajaba tenía un poco de relación con el Galaxy, hicimos algunas cosas con ellos, pero no con, no con James, no, no soy fan, no he tenido ningún contacto. Muchas gracias. De nada, Víctor. Lo que necesites. Okay, we've got last one here from Leopoldo. Leopoldo, go ahead. Maybe not. Okay, I think we'll close with that. No, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Catch gotcha, Jessica, ahead. when you were trying to hire or when the club, when you were trying to hire a new coach, do you contemplate to hire a woman coach or or you have any agenda just to find the best prospect possible? That is correct. Thank you for the question. Yes, the the goal was to find the best the best candidate possible. Uh, the the group of finalists was a diverse group of finalists. Uh, but the goal certainly was to ensure that uh, the best the best candidate based on who we spoke with uh, was who we hired. But there was an intentionality in ensuring that the the group that we spoke to covered all ages, races, genders, uh, ethnicities, et cetera. In, in any time when James was the coach, did you feel that the woman doesn't feel comfortable to be working with a man as a coach? I, I think I heard part of your question and I think I understand the premise. Um, and again, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable commenting on uh, that because it's part of the investigation at this point. I do appreciate the question, but uh, I'd like to keep the focus on, on Juan joining the club um, and appreciate, appreciate y'all uh, asking and, and welcoming him with such warm regard. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, we'll close with that. Everyone, thank you very much for joining us. We'll have media availability or media resources available later today. And I'll see a few of you all later today for the Dynamo Media Availability here at 1230. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.